Let's bring in now Alex Winley, uh, Inter Miami reporter for Five Reasons Sports and host of the Inter Miami podcast, The Heron Outlet. Alex, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, David. Thanks for having me on. So I messaged you before we came on and said, I literally don't know what to ask you. This is so ridiculous. So let's start with when did you see this report and sort of what is the 24 hours since it's come out been like for you and trying to process it and, and figure it out? Yeah, I think uh, we initially heard some news late yesterday evening. And, you know, I had to do a double take because it, it was just, you know, obviously you get those, you know, messy to enter Miami rumors every so often. But this one looked, uh, you know, it was a bit shocking. But, um, you know, this morning there there have been a couple reports sort of pushing back at that, just, uh, both from Messi's entourage and from the club itself. So while it's fun to, you know, talk about and, you know, sort of, you know, hey, Messi's coming to MLS right now. There's there's nothing in it. Um, sources have said, you know, right now there's there's they have spoken to Messi, but nothing is concrete yet. When Inter Miami does talk about this stuff, though, off the record, on the record, do they try and separate themselves or? It sort of sounds like they want to be connected with them. They don't mind the connection. Yeah, of course. You know, it's Inter Miami. You know, uh, uh, this past weekend there was Formula One down here, and you know, it was such a star-studded event that you know Inter Miami would, you know, be uh, quite frankly dumb not to at least entertain a, a a couple of rumors. But as of right now, it's it you know it's it's not happening, especially you know the thirty-five percent. Uh, ownership stake does seem a little bit much and, mm. you know, out of the, you know, blue, really. So uh, as of right now, no, there's there's nothing happening. Are we in a situation where all of us have to be nice to Gonzalo Higuain because they're best friends to make him want to come? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Gonzalo, he's 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 uh, in a bit of he's out of form at the moment. So uh, even if, you know, if Messi does come in 2023, um you know, Iguain may or not may not be in Miami anyway, so uh, I don't. I, I it probably isn't the case. We have heard that Luis Suarez is leading Atletico Madrid, which is a player we've heard connected with in Miami as well. In what you're hearing, do you think outside of Messi that they will go back again to the Gonzalo Iguain, Blaise Matuidi, aging star out of Europe besides Messi, or is that the only person? Personally, I think with uh, Chris Henderson at the helm, I do think they're going to shift more to, you know, the Gregory, Jean Mata types of players that can have an, a real big impact, but not necessarily star players. Um, you know, of course, uh, Jorge Mas has said if there's a, a star that does want to come to Miami and, and you know, play for the, the shirt and, and play well, of course, they'll consider it. But, you know, seeing the shift uh, this offseason with Chris Henderson bringing all, in all these uh, um, you know, stars, you know, stars like DeAndre Yedlin, but they're, they're not, you know, they're not messy level, but they're, they're good players that can help propel the team to where they want to go. So, you know, of course they'll, they'll, they'll entertain those rumors, but it has to be the right fit because we all saw how poorly it went in 2020 when they did bring in Iguain and Blaise Matuidi. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out for them. So, um, yeah, of course they'll, they'll entertain those rumors, but you know, it's, you know, it has to be the right fit, of course. I guess this is a, probably a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What would Messi to Miami mean? Like, how would it affect the club? How would it affect, I don't know, the region? What 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 would that transfer make the club? It would be absolutely astronomical. I think Messi is probably the most recognizable soccer player on the planet, bar, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo as well. And Miami is such a soccer hotbed. I, I can't imagine... You know, the you know ticket sales will go through the roof. Season tickets, you know, shirts would sell. You, you can see Messi's impact on PSG, the amount of sponsors that he brought in for them, and uh, yeah, it would be absolutely crazy. But you know, you know, at the time, at this time, I I, I don't think Inter Miami will bring him in. But you know, who knows? Things can change. You know, after the World Cup, maybe he'll change his mind. But um, yeah, it, it would just be a, a, a crazy impact down here. There, one of the players you mentioned, those younger pieces that have come in, is obviously Leo Campagna. He's been incredible for them so far he is on loan i believe has there been any discussion about his permanent future with the club yeah uh, inter miami do have the option to purchase him i know leo is pretty comfortable here in miami he has an american passport he has family here in miami so uh and plus he wants to go to the world cup so he's just uh comfortable down here and he's scoring goals and uh like i said miami do have the option to purchase so i i can imagine chris henderson is is trying to work out a deal with 
uh, Wolves to to bring him here on a permanent. I haven't heard anything concrete about that, but you know the the way his form is going right now, Inter Miami would be absolutely crazy not to consider, especially since he's he's absolutely grabbed that number nine spot by the neck, and you know he's just ran away with it. He scored again this weekend, but I guess you could say a disappointing result for Inter Miami after taking that lead to tie two two. What did you see from that game against DC United? Yeah, I saw a team in Miami. They've gone through so many, you know, players and and style evolutions. I think this year with under Neville, he's found a, a system, the four three three, you know, that that suits the group of players now. You know, you've got guys like Ariel Lasseter, Robbie Robinson, uh, Emerson Rodriguez, who have pace to burn on the on the wings, and so Neville has just set them up in a four three three with a super solid midfield of uh, Bryce Stuke or Mo Adams or Gregory or, or Jean Mata. And, you know, that strong midfield, they they support the attack and trident that would be Campana, Ariel Lasseter, Emerson Rodriguez, or even an Indiana Vasilev. So, yeah, it's basically defend compactly when their opponents have the ball and then, you know, spray it out wide and try to get in behind. And against D.C., you saw that a couple of times. I know Ariel Lasseter, he scored a goal, but it was called offside. But, you know, that's the sort of football that um, Neville is trying to implement right now. And, of course, you know, they don't always create chances consistently, but um, Neville's sort of hoping with the expansive type of football that they play, you know, just kind of bunker and then counter. You don't necessarily uh, need an out and out 10. You've got guys like John Mata who can be creative for the team when he, he needs to and wants to be. So it, it's basically a, a, a compact 4 3 3, and they, they break on the counter most of the times. And, and it's, it's been working out so far. What have they said so far about the, the quick turnaround and, and sort of their expectations of what they need to do? in Philly tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be a, a really congested week for Inter Miami. They've got Philly uh, on Wednesday and then the New York Red Bulls, I believe this Saturday, and then the U.S. Open Cup game against yeah. Orlando City coming up, which will be a definitely a huge one. I think Neville uh, tomorrow will probably rotate quite a, quite a few players. I know a couple of players won't be playing. Uh, Robbie, Robbie Robinson and Mabika, uh, Kieran Gibbs, they're all out with uh, various injuries. So, um, and the season has been uh, injury wise, not too kind to inner Miami, but um, you know, they got to play through it and Neville will, will certainly be rotating players. You mentioned that open cup game against Orlando coming up next week, midweek, by the way, uh, their game tomorrow, 7 30 PM Eastern time at the Philadelphia union, of course, MLS uh, live on ESPN plus or your local television as well. As someone in Florida, how big a moment will that be? It's obviously not the first time they'll face off, but a knockout game, chance for quarterfinals. How big will that be? And, and should we expect maybe to see them rest players on the weekend to focus on that game? Yeah, Neville has said that he wants to go all out for the U.S. Open Cup. Um, Miami's in a bit of a transition period, you know, with the sanctions and, and you know, the DPs, you know, sort of seeing out their contracts. They're sort of in a transition period, but he has stated that he does want to go for the U.S. Open Cup. So I, I can imagine he'll play his strongest first choice 11. Um, we will see some rotation on, on, on Wednesday and maybe against the Red Bulls as well. Because you know, you know, the teams are coming into the thick of summer right now, mm -hmm. where the the fixtures just get you know fast and and really congested. So yes, you you will see some rotation, and I, I fully expect a, a a fully strong starting eleven for Miami come uh, US US Open Cup day. Thick of summer also means I'm pretty sure into Miami is going to set a record on weather delays over the course of this season. They're already they're already in the lead. Uh, Alex, I don't know how you were supposed to play games down there when it's thunderstorms every yeah, other night. Florida weather is genuinely crazy. It'll be thunderstorming for five minutes and the sun will come out and it it's just crazy. But you're absolutely right. <laughs> the records are there. But if you ever want to follow the team, follow Alex Winley. Um, she does a great job covering everything. Inter Miami, Five Reasons Sports and host of Inter Miami's podcast, The Heron Outlet. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for bringing a little bit of Leo Messi into our lives today.